Hi, I'm Noid Baker today, <laughs> just like I promised last year. I'm going to talk about my dovetail jig. Yes, and for the occasion, I'm going to make some dwarves. Yes, but I don't know if we can call them dwarves when they don't have any bottoms. Yes, I bought this jig at the beginning of 2010 and I've been using it ever since. I bought the 18 inch model, but Lee also has a 12 and 24 inch model. So for the rest of this episode, I'm going to talk about my experience with my machine. But the first thing I have to talk about is the case I made to lift the dovetail jig. I found the idea of this in a shop note magazine. The two side wings are super useful to put a router on each one. I really like to use two different routers when I make true dovetails. On top of it, when the wings are down, I have space to clamp the jig to my workbench. Inside, there's a box that contains everything I need to make dovetails, like the back support to keep long pieces straight. On each side of this support, there is a stop to quickly place a piece straight. I also have two others in front of the jig. And since the actual jig is screwed onto a wooden plank, I just have to screw this plank to the jig and I'm ready to go. As you can see here, putting a piece of wood ready to be cut is super easy because of the bottom stop. What I love the most about my jig is the fact that each finger can be placed anywhere on the bar, contrary to a conventional fixed finger dovetail jig, which looks more like this. This kind of jig forces you to have drawers at a multiple of 7 8 of an inch. So by being able to put the fingers anywhere I want, I'm able to make drawers which look like that. All my drawers have different dovetail spacings. I just think this jig is super easy to use. I just unscrew the fingers and place them where I want. Oh, by the way, since this is a Canadian product, you have to use a Robertson screwdriver and it's included in the kit when you buy it. You can also find some plastic strips. I will come back to this later on. There is also one guide bushing, but you can also use a 7 16th guide bushing. There is also an instruction booklet. In fact, this booklet is your best friend. Inside it, you will find all the necessary information that you will need to build dovetail drawers. To use this jig, you will also need a set of special router bits. Those are the ones I use the most, nah, but they're not included in the kit. Now I'm going to show you how to make half-blind dovetails. The first thing you have to do is put the pattern in the half-blind dovetail position. After putting a drawer's side at the front, I can put the dovetails where I want them. And for this one, I'm going to use five dovetails. I put two dovetails at each end and one in the middle. I like to push every finger together to find the spacing that I need. In this example, I'm going to use this measurement divided in two, move the middle finger at the right place and tighten it. By the way, make sure that all the screws are well tightened. If you forget one, you will probably, like I did, lose a screw because of the vibration. I was forced to order more because of that. Here you can see how the guide bushing will follow the fingers. Nah, but I have a small problem. The guide can go between two fingers. I need to close both gaps. So after measuring what I need, it's time to use the plastic strips. Since I keep all the pieces that I've already cut, I will recut two of my old pieces. Now I just need to 
put it in place. I do the same for the second opening. And now the jig is ready. But I need to select the router bit that I will need to cut those dovetails. And according to the instructions, it's this one that I need. In fact, uh, it's the one I use the most. So after putting it inside my router, I trace the depth of the dovetails. Put the router on the jig and adjust it to this height. After moving back the guide to this thickness, I can cut the tails. Oh, by the way, you can also buy this jig with a matrix scale. As you can see, it's super easy to cut the tails. And with the small plastic spacers I've put between the tails, I just need to follow the pattern to make perfect tails. Ah, but still, you have to be very careful not to lift the router when it's inside the pattern, because you will damage either the pattern or the router a bit. And I speak from experience. This is not pleasant. Now I can remove the side and put the front of the drawer to cut the pins. But to do so, I have to turn around the pattern and lock it in place at the same measurement that I've used on the other side. After that, it's as easy as following the pattern. Now it's time to check the fit. Okay, it's obvious that it's not okay. Now with my new best friend, <laughs> I mean the instruction booklet, I just have to find a solution to this problem. And the instructions say to lower the bit. So I'm lowering the bit. Cut the ends of both lengths and make another test. And here you can see that with the jig I made, it's easier to see and less painful on the back. It's now time to check out if it fits. It's perfect. If I didn't have any wood blow out, this would have been better. But it was to be expected because I used construction lumber. Uh, some people will say it's a lot of work to make one side of a drawer. Uh, but you have to think of it as if you're making more than 10 drawers. But now that I know that my adjustments are perfect, I can cut the drawers front to length and finish it. Here you go, I have three sides to my drawer. It's exactly what I want. I will come back later to do the back. But I know what you're thinking right now. You're saying to yourself, huh, how can we make drawers with asymmetrical sides? In fact, ah, this is quite easy. I made dozens of them. First thing I will do is to remove a small part of the planks that I've already prepared. Here you can see that the last pin was here, now it has to be there. So I need to move all the fingers. After placing them where I want, I'm not totally done. No, I need to do the same mirror pattern on the other side. I really like to use my caliper for that to make sure everything is identical on both sides. But after that, all the rest of the operations are identical to what I've shown you before. When I make this type of assembly, I always place both sides in the jig at the same time. Exactly like this. And when the tails are done, I need to make the pins. But here I have to be 
very careful not to cut the last section because this will ruin the front of the drawer. When one side is done, I take the front, turn it, put it on the other side and cut the other pins. And here you go, I have a drawer with two asymmetrical sides. This leaves space for a top runner. Now I have two drawers without a back. So I'm going to make two dovetails for the back. The first thing to do is to flip the pattern on the other side. And again, using the instructions, I choose the router bit needed for two dovetails. After switching the bit in the router, I can cut both sides to the right length. Mark the thickness of the wood and adjust the router to this thickness. But before going any further, I also put a straight router bit in my other router and adjust it to the right height. Then I can cut all the dovetails. This is quite easy, because there is only one position to put the pattern. And here I go. When I'm done, uh, just like for the half blind dovetails, I turn the pattern on the other side. Then I measure the space between two tails, adjust the pattern to this measurement, and cut the pins with my other router, uh, the one with the straight bit. Now it's time to check if it's okay. Uh, it's a bit tight, but I can live with that. It's exactly the look I was looking for. Now I can turn around the back and cut the other pins. And here I have one drawer. Okay. There's no bottom, but I still have four sides. Now it's time to do the back of the other drawer. To do so, I need to move the fingers. But I do something that I don't advise you to do. I make asymmetrical dovetails on the sides. So many things can go wrong by doing so. See what I meant when I said that a lot of things can go wrong. Well, I cut the tails on the wrong side and the pieces cannot fit together. Okay, since this is an exercise and I don't want to lose face, I will redo this and recut the tails but on the right side this time. And now, since I didn't goof up, the drawer goes together. But when you look at it, it's pretty obvious that the left tail is larger than the right one. This has for effect that on this side, the large tail is on the left side, but it's on the right for the other side. Okay, this is not a big deal for the back, but it wouldn't be really pretty if it had been in the front. But you can do a lot more types of assembly with this dovetail jig like one pass half blind dovetails, just like the one that can be done with some other less fancy dovetail jigs. There's also rabbited half blind dovetails, sliding dovetails and box joints. But this jig may do even more. I received from Lee an isolock pattern to make different types of assembly. Okay, to be honest with you, it was given to me. We'll discover it together. The first thing to do is to read the instructions. Then according to them, the first thing I should do is make sure the pattern is centered on my jig. Then I just have to put the router bit, which was included, on my router and also the special guide bushing. Now I can do my first test. 
I'm going to do this in a piece of plywood. I know it's often difficult to cut this kind of shape in plywood, but it's just a test to adjust the guide bushing. After cutting the shape with the router, I cut part of the plywood. Then, after cutting this in two, I can check if both pieces are mating perfectly together. Ah, since it looks perfect, I will make another test. Again with plywood. After cutting the pins, I only need to move the pattern to the right and put back the locking pin. Now you can see that I have a space on the left side that I didn't have before. Next, I can put my other piece of wood on the other direction and cut the tails. Now I check if the fit is okay. Since it's to my liking, I will make a box. The first thing I have to do is to rip my wood to the height of the box I want. In fact, the adjustment is pretty similar to all I've been showing you so far. The first thing to do is to adjust the cutting height. When it's at the right place, I go ahead and cut the four sets of pins. And here's the final result. It's pretty special to see this. But I still need to cut two more pieces of wood for the other two sides. And just like before, I have to move the pattern to the right. Make sure my piece of wood is square and cut the tails. When all the four sides are cut, well, I have a box. Okay, but a box with no bottom. This is pretty different from what I'm used to see. I can just imagine that this would have been even more impressive if I had used two different species of wood. But still, you can see the difference between the end grain and the edge grain. But I would really want to do something else with this isolock pattern. So I glued together some small lengths of hardwood flooring that my neighbor gave me. They are so small that I won't be able to do much with them. So I will begin by cutting all their ends straight. And to really try this new pattern, I'm going to use the other side to cut those glue ups. And here I go for my first plank. After moving the pattern, yes, again to the right, I cut another glue up. And here's the look of it when both glue ups are together. It's something else. This is a pattern that I've never seen before to join two planks together. I'm going to switch pattern again and cut two more planks with the same clover pattern that I've used before. And here's the look of my two planks with this pattern. Okay, I'm not sure, but I think I like this pattern better than the other one. But I have more waist at each end because of this shape. But since it's for saving some wood, uh, maybe losing only this amount is worth it. And here they are, one beside the other. Uh, you can judge by yourself the one you like the most. I hope this small video helped you understand how to make dovetails with the lead jig. Speaking for myself, I really like this jig. 
I use it frequently. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.